Hello, beautiful makers. Welcome to episode 41 of Stitching the High Notes. I can't believe it's 41. That's crazy. <laughs> um, my name is Joanna, and this is a video podcast about knitting, sewing, music, cross-stitching, the arts, and all things crafty. I'm coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area, where I am a local opera singer as well as an arts fundraiser. You can see what I'm up to on the social medias at as at Opera Joe, um, most notably on Instagram and Ravelry as well, increasingly so these days. I'm back on the Ravelry, you guys. It's great. So yeah, how are you all doing? This is usually, well, it's been this year up until recently, a weekly podcast. It seems like it's going back to how it used to be back in the day, which is a bi-weekly podcast, which I'm actually pretty cool with. I hope you all are too. That means I have that much more to share with you and it gives me a little bit of a breather to create and also get used to a few new patterns and rhythms in my life. Uh, many of you, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. You probably have seen that I've started a new job recently, so that is going very well. Thank you all for asking for those of you who've reached out and asked. Um, if you are a new viewer, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I have so much to share and chat with you all about today. So grab your beverage of choice and let's get started. As is tradition, we usually start with tea time. Today, I am drinking water. I do have some lovely tea to chat with you all about later um, down the road in a community cork board, but I am drinking water. I just came back from my first quilting class. <laughs> Yay, where I made this. And I can't wait to tell you about it. So I'm a little dehydrated because I was making those flying geese, y'all. <laughs> so I am drinking water. But grab your beverage of choice, as I said, and let's chat away, shall we? So first, let me grab a sip here. I'm going to jump right into the nitty goodness. And I have some finished objects for you. Are you ready for this? <laughs> oh my goodness, I finished my Comic Con sock blank socks. These are made out of a sock blank that I purchased from Andy of Andre Sue Knits. And I knit them while I was at Comic Con, and you will see why shortly. I'll show you the remainder of the sock blank. I love them. I love how they knit up kind of with a quasi self striping where I showed you last I had a hoe last time a half object and this time I finished this sock and I showed you last time it was at this progress keeper so I knit all of the rest. It's a fish lips kiss heel. It's a toe up vanilla sock just stuck in it round and round and round. I did a Judy's Magic cast on, and I did 15 row cuff, just two by two rib. And I love them, they're so squishy and cozy. They're gonna go straight into my box of socks, which I haven't showed you in a while, but I do have a few pairs in there. This is a um, knit along, year long. Oh, just lost some papers down the side there. It's a year-long knit-along um, with Kristen of Woolen Vine Yarns and the Yarngasm podcast. And you, the goal is to have 12 pairs of socks ready for you at the start of the new year, so 2018. So this is my box, and I've got a few socks in there. Just two pairs, or yeah, two pairs. I've got my first sock blank socks, which were made with Andy's lovely sock blank, and it's uh, Tardis Socks. And then I've got a Tardis sock blank, rather. And then I've got this gorgeousness, which are the Prairie Socks by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And this is yarn um, that is Mrs. Weasley's Sock Club. I can't remember the name of the colorway. Anyway, it's delightful. 
I did it. I somehow um, made myself get these also into the Anna Green Gables because <laughs> they're green and I was taking part in the Anna Green Gables knit along too. So I love them. So now these guys will go in there too. Minus my Tartars, Tartus Progress Keeper. So the sock blank I used, I have now a collection of Andy sock blanks that I kind of want to frame. I want to take a square of one of the prints and then frame them someday in my imaginary craft room. So this is the sock blank of what's left over. And you can see why I used it for Comic-Con. So there you go. <laughs> So yeah, those were a joy to knit. Now I'm going to cast on another pair of vanilla socks because I love them. I was eager to get back to the new way of knitting them that I love. By the way, I used a 2.5 millimeter needle, which is a one and a half, I believe, needle. Um, so yeah, I was going to go back to two by two, which I recently discovered with the prairie socks, which I just showed you. But I, I kind of want they're easy. They're more easily transportable um, if you do it one sock at a time. And now that I commute on BART, which is the local train kind of system here, I uh, it's easier to do it one at a time. So I think I'm gonna do that. And I kind of want to try the whirlwind toe that um, lovely jewels of so sweet violet podcast and blog um and Etsy shop and she's an amazing maker um she it does a whirlwind tow all of the time and I'm really enticed by that so I think I'm gonna try to do that as well I'm not sure if I'll do top down toe up I usually do toe up um so we shall see but yeah I'm gonna use some lovely yarn from legacy fiber knits um that is Glorious. It's called Winterfell. It's part of their Skein of Thrones series that they just did um, to celebrate Game of Thrones. And since we're only a couple of episodes away from the end of the season, I um, am going to cast those puppies on probably tonight as I'm editing. So yeah, it's good to have an, a vanilla pair. I really do want to make like the Fergus's socks to celebrate, continue to celebrate Outlander. Um, but I, in another pattern, but you will see here, this will go into works in progress. I love having something that is just mindless. I don't even have to look at it to knit on because I have been on a journey, you all. I've been on a work in progress journey. <laughs> so I have been taking part in, or I have been hosting um, the summer knit along, the summer garment cow. Um, which started May 1st and it ends in just a couple of weeks, August 31st. And so many of you are taking part and it's so wonderful to see your works in progress and your finished objects. It's so inspiring. Um, this is to make something that you would wear in the summer, whatever climate you may be in. Some For some folks that means a really light um, weight sweater. For others it means um, like a t-shirt or a tank top made out of like really thin linen or cotton what have you some folks have knitted or crocheted a like sarong to go around their bathing suits it's great <laughs> it's been so much fun I encourage you to check out the finished object thread for sure anywho I am making the Gilead pullover out of linen yarn um, from Quince and Co and their eclipsed uh, colorway. The base is Sparrow. And um, it's been a learning experience and I'm nearing the end of it. So let me catch you up from where I left off last time. I have the back panel, it's done in pieces. So I've got the back panel, lots of lovely drape, gorgeous. And now, and just so you know, there's seven inches of positive ease. If you are new to the podcast and haven't seen me gush about this project before. <laughs> so now I'm on to, hold on, let me grab my ball of yarn real quick. <clears throat> so here's the yarn. 100% organic linen, I believe. 
Um, so I am on the front panel. And last time I showed you, I had just a little itty bitty border bit. And now I've got, oh, I've been a little obsessed with this the last couple of weeks. It's been two weeks. So <laughs> where the progress keeper was is where I was last time I showed you all. And yeah, I've done just a little, just a little bit. <laughs> so it's this lovely lace panel down the front. And I love it. It's going to be glorious. So I've been on an adventure with this. Not long after I podcasted last episode, I got to a certain point. I'll see if I can find it, which is a good thing to say if you can't find it. I think it was right here. So if you look really close, you see how this, this guy kind of goes a little bit. <laughs> It's because in the midst of doing this row here at some point, I dropped a stitch in the middle of the lace, y'all. I, I had been off a account. I think I even mentioned like I was off account and I couldn't figure out why. And I was hoping it would mess it up. Well, it didn't totally mess it up, but my little Virgo mind was kind of going like this a little bit. And I was worried that down the line, it would kind of really throw off the lace pattern. It didn't, so it's good. So I, lo and behold, I was at lunch one day and I discovered that I had a drop stitch. And thankfully, because it's linen, it was a little sticky and it hadn't like dropped all the way down would have been horrible. I don't even want to think about that. So I decided, okay, let me see if I can flub it and do a little surgery. Thankfully, it was in a bit of the lace that, you know, you could kind of crochet hook it a little bit and whatever. And I got it fixed, I think. And it was funny, I was in the cantina at work and a lot of the costume shop from the opera were there and they were watching me like literally sweating and I was so red over this. And when I fixed it, they were like, yeah! It was like five people went, yeah! <laughs> so I fixed it, sorta of, kinda. And then I knit probably about five more rows and I noticed, oh, nope, that one little stitch and my modifying for at least one or two rows really did make a difference. And it's the diamond pattern is a little fukunk, a little I let it sit for a night because I was like, do I want to like try to put a lifeline in after the fact and then rip back all the way? Do I really need to tink back 10 rows, which, oh my God, that would have taken forever. Like, what do I want to do? Ripping it out was not an option. So I was like, how much am I going to notice this? Like, where is this going to lay on my body? Whatever. Where it's going to lay is basically, as I told my VKN virtual night buddies, it's basically in the under boob. <laughs> Nobody is going to see it. And if they do, I am obviously okay with it. And I welcome them to it. So... <laughs> So I was like, okay, I'm cool with it. So I I went ahead and kept knitting and just kept tabs to make sure that things were still lining up and we were golden from that point on. I um, did not do a lifeline after that. And maybe I should have, but I did basically every row in between here, I made sure that I had the right amount of stitches. And I so I was counting the whole way. And triple checking my work more than I was before. So you can kind of see, it's hard to show, but you can kind of see the cool pattern it's making. Yay! So yeah, so that is my work in progress. Where I'm at with it now is I think I'm done with the lace, y'all. And I'm doing the neck and shoulder shaping and binding off. So I'm going to get started on that maybe today, probably tomorrow. Um, because I will be editing this lovely podcast. Um, and watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm eager to finish this. I'm really aiming to try to finish it by the end of the knit-along slash make-along. Um, 
at, by the end of the month because September and October, um, you might have heard me mention before, are kind of the warmest months here in the Bay Area. So this will be perfect. So yeah, I'm trying to think if I've forgotten anything. I'm using my Lika kind of drift woody sandals. Sandals. I wish I had drift with sandals. <laughs> Needles. They're size US 5 3.75 millimeter needles. These little stoppers are from Coco Knits, and it's just to make sure my stitches don't slide off. And yeah, I think it's good. I think it's good like lunch hour knitting. You know, I do a couple rows because I'm I think I'm up to like 203 stitches. So yeah. So that's my work in progress. Um yeah, so next up I've got for you I didn't put it in my show notes I'm looking at my show notes right now and I I I don't have a lot to share with this but I did want to mention it is that I kind of mentioned like in the queue which is I'm gonna do some vanilla socks and I've mentioned before that I'm gonna be doing the road to Rhinebeck cow or mystery not long rather, which is a shawl in DK weight by the amazing, lovely Mina, who is the knitting expat, the knitting expat podcast. And I um, discovered that I thought I had enough yarn for this in my stash and I did not. So I reached out to, because I wanna do this pumpkin themed. So I reached out to my fellow pump queen, as we call each other, Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi and asked if she would whip up some DK weight yarn for me for and I commissioned slash ordered some for this project so I'm really excited that should be arriving pretty soon and in the midst of this I know she's mentioned it on her recent podcast but we are excited to announce the pumpkin make along for 2017. <laughs> Get your pumpkin projects ready, people. The pumpkin mal is coming. Yeah. So we're switching it to mal to make along to incorporate all of the fiber related things that you can make on Ravelry. So it's a little bit more accurate and more descriptive. So it's uh, knitting, crocheting, weaving, spinning, anything that is pumpkin themed, pumpkin colored, pumpkin pattern, what have you. You could totally like do Halloween, but like jack as long as like jack-o'-lantern and pumpkin -y stuff is in there. Um, we did this for the first time last year, Gabby and I, and it was so much fun and we're so excited to do it again this year. We've already heard from a lot of folks who are excited as well and eager to start planning and gathering things together. Hold on. So the Mal will be September 15th, so the middle of September, and it will go until U.S. Thanksgiving, which is how it was last year too. So this will be from September 15th to November 23rd. Yeah. Um, we still have to hash out all of the details and the rules and everything. So stay tuned for that. Um, but do let me know, um, let Gabby know or let myself know if you are a maker and would like to donate any prizes to the Make Along. We would be happy to showcase your wonderful work in your shops um, and gather prizes for all you lovely participants out there so you can reach out to me either through Ravelry um you could do Instagram but I'm not as quick to respond on there um uh, through direct message rather um but you can also do it with through uh opera joe at stitching the high notes.com which I will put down here so yeah, so it's so much fun. I'm so excited. So I can't wait to get that lovely yarn. And then I'm gonna make these Game of Thrones socks. It's gonna be great. And I still have some whips on the needles um, for Outlander inspired things because that premiere is coming up soon, September 10th. And I know there are still a lot of Outlander inspired knit-alongs and make-alongs happening. One new one I think is uh, Grace has announced that she's going to be doing one of Babel's Traveling Yarns. So that's super exciting. By the way, Grace, I'm really excited that you're dyeing yarn and I want to talk to you to get some. Okay, side note. <laughs> so, uh, Cross Stitch Corner 
By the way, you'll probably notice I'm kind of, I'm trying to flow from one segment to another so I'm not like cutting and editing as much. So bear with me as I get used to this new rhythm. Anyway, cross stitch corner. Cross stitching has fallen, not fallen, it's just on hold. My heart is still with it. <laughs> but it's on hold right now while I'm aiming to get this um, Gilead pullover done. Um, I am itching for it though. I'm looking down here. I've like got this floss here for my project and I'm just like, I can't wait. I can't wait to stitch. So I've been working on the forest uh, pattern by Satsuma Street and we've got like a little impromptu multiple year <laughs> cross stitch along that's happening in the cross stitch corner um, thread in the Ravelry group, um, uh, which is a Satsuma Street pattern as well called Alpine. And yeah, any project that you are working on, I'd love to hear about it. We all would love to hear about it in Cross Stitch Corner. Um, yeah, I did notice that frosted the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery has announced, and I think Friday, a couple of days ago, um, made live some new along stitchery alongs, and one of which is Halloween themed. I don't have any time to do it, but I really want to do it. However, I do want to get one of their new enamel pins. Did you all see this? It's this cute little floss guy with cross stitcher on it. So I've got to get one of those. And I did buy a couple of patterns. I mean, I didn't buy all the stuff to start it, but I bought the patterns. And these were by Plastic Little Covers. You might have heard of them if you watch Inside Number 23. Um, and I believe Grace has talked about them or she pinged me and told me, hey, check out these patterns. Because Plastic Little Covers has some Outlander inspired cross stitch patterns. As well as one that I purchased that is Stranger Things, the Netflix series inspired. And it's so cute. Um, the Stranger Things ones says uh, friends don't lie and it's got like a little 11 and like little things from the show. It's so cute. And then the one that Outlander one I got was um, the one that says Dinner Fash, which I love. And I kind of want to make and put it in my cubicle at work. Is that weird? Would that be weird? I think it'd be cute, right? Anyway, so that's Cross Stitch Corner for this episode. Stay tuned to this space for more cross stitching in the near future, especially once I finish my Gilead pullover. I um, am going to go into an epic from the posty slash more giveaway announcements, like more giveaways for y'all to take part in. So exciting. I don't know why I get so excited about giveaways and giving away things and being a part of giving away things. So much fun. So I got, I'm looking at this huge pile of lovely heartwarming pure love on my table right now. Some of which I've purchased, a lot of which are gifts to me, which I just... Are, it's so heartwarming and so needed in this world. So yeah. So the first thing I'm going to share with you is a potential spoiler, but I don't think it is. I kind of mentioned it last episode or the episode before that I had received it. Um, and it is the first installment of the recent Harry Potter Sock Club by A Homespun House. <laughs> so I wanted to share it with you all. So spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Go to this timestamp if you don't want to see it. I'm getting the, oh my gosh, the Sucra, it comes with the Sucra Sucra Miniatures Charm. Okay, you're ready. Are you ready for this? Oh my God. Oh, I can't even. <laughs> Maybe I'll cast these. No, I want to do Game of Thrones. Oh my gosh. Look at this how look at it's got like blacks mixed into it so when you see it on the screen it has this or it's not even black it's just really deep deep purple oh my gosh it is so gorgeous 
So this is Soft Sock Merino. I'm trying to focus it as I read this. And it's uh, part of the Harry Potter Club. It's 100 grams, um, and the big skein. And it says, you're going to suffer, but you're going to be happy about it. <laughs> and the small guy here for heels, toes, and cuffs is called Broaden Your Minds. I really love this colorway. Molly, I don't know if you ever watch this, but I love this colorway. Oh my goodness. It's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Oh my gosh, this is so dynamic. It almost looks like albacore, like iridescent. -y. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. I have so many socks I wanna make. I need to just be a sock machine. By the way, Tracy, hi Tracy, of Nor George, Yarns um, and the craft third craft room on the third floor podcast. I'll put it down here. She just came out with a new podcast and she has a knitting machine that makes socks like in no time. That's amazing. That, be, that must be so valuable if you're a yarn dyer, so then you can knit up um, your yarn and show it off to people. I like it. So, <laughs> this is the charm that came with it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So I am totally blanking and I meant to look this up on the character that this is based on. So I'm going to put it down here on the screen. But this, I know who it is mentally, but look at this. It's got like little tea leaves in it to read it. Uh, oh my gosh, I love it so much. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So I cannot, and it comes in this little, like, little pillboxy thingamajigger. I love it. So yeah, in the postie, from the postie rather. I don't want to be crude. <laughs> so I took part in a couple of swaps, and their postie packages are on their way to them. Sorry for the delay, ladies. Um, but I received them this past week, or past couple of weeks. And the first one is from Catherine of Crafternoon Treats. She um, dyes some of the most gorgeous yarn, and she is a delightful podcast. I encourage you to check out if you don't already watch it. So she provided a skein of uh, custom-dyed yarn for the... Uh, for a winner of the Beatrix Potter cow that we had in the spring. And the prompt was that, or the prize was that the winner would uh, select a photo or some kind of inspiration. Then Catherine would use that photo or inspiration and um, knit up or dye up some yarn. And she offered that to me as well as part of the swap. And so at the time that I gave her my prompt, I was about to get the job at the opera. So I decided, what the hey, let's go for it. Cause no, even if I didn't get the job, I mean, I I was like basically about to get the job and accept it, but I decided to go, what the hey, I love the opera no matter what. And so I sent her the photo of the San Francisco opera, which you can see here. And she sent, <sighs> get ready. Okay, so you see the photo? Here's the yarn. Oh my gosh. It's, I cried. I literally cried when I opened this up. It's perfection. Just look how beautiful it is. It's got the seats and the gold curtains and the armchairs and this is part of the chandelier, the sky kind of bit of the chandelier above and the silveriness of the chandelier. I just, I am in awe of this. Thank you so much, Catherine. It's gorgeous. So here's her lovely logo for her shop. It's on Etsy. Oh my gosh, I love this. This is South Atlantic Fingering. It's a hundred percent British Falkland Merino. It's wonderful. It's got this like, it's not like rustic, like harsh, you know, but it's, um, but it 
has like a, I don't know if this is the right description for it. So apologies if you all know better than me, but it feels like it's got a little bit of toothiness to it. So it feels kind of rustic at first, but then when you put it up against your face, face, it's rather smooth. It's really interesting. So I'm not quite sure what I want to make with this. I kind of want to make a cowl. I'm trying to like really decide if I can handle, cause I'm pretty sensitive. I mean, look, like I'm so sensitive, but then I have this little contrasting guy. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do socks with this. It's too precious. Maybe a hat. That might be kind of cool. eh? it's a hundred grams. It's non superwash. That must be what I'm feeling. It's like a hundred percent merino, but it's not superwash. It's awesome. I really like it. So yeah, and it, the colorway is San Francisco Opera. So yeah. So oh my gosh, and that's not it. So she also sent one for the future for a super special giveaway to be announced at some point down the line. I think it'll be for a milestone giveaway package. But it's game for one of you. So y'all have that to look forward to. And then she sent me some cute progress keepers and stitch markers that are music and sewing making themed. The sewing one is turned around here. Let me see if I can show you. There we go. Yay. Love these. And she sent some glorious, glorious tea. I will be partaking in very soon. Thank you, thank you. And she sent this, her note was on this gorgeous card. And she, this is by David Hockney. It's called Autumn Trees Near Thixendale. And she just on her recent podcast discussed her trip to go see a lot of his work. So I encourage you to check out her latest podcast. I'll put a link in the show notes. So yeah. So thank you so much, Catherine. The next swap I did was with Molly of Molly Klein Design. Molly. And she sent some gorgeous goodies, not only for me, but for you as well. So the first, first of all, she sent it on this card, Monarch Butterfly. I love Monarch Butterflies. Gorgeous. And she sent me a bag. She has a lovely Etsy shop that you should totally check out. And she sent me a bag. That's Game of Thrones. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> I will be making my socks and putting them in here. And I've got a little treble clef stitch marker. Oh my gosh, I love it. And here's her logo if you can see it. Molly Klein design. Love it. It's got a cute little handle. And inside she has some tea and candy and goodies. And she's got this pumpkin spiced soap, I think she said. Ooh. I want pumpkin spice lattes so bad. It's not even funny. Let me look and see what it is. It is little pumpkin spice soaps, yeah that I think she makes. So, oh my God, it's made, made the bag smell so good. Here's her card. So yeah. And then she sent a cute little bag of minis cause we're doing a mini exchange as well. And she sent this cute opera theater decoration the little purse and then she sent for one of you a bag Yay! so I'm gonna go ahead and give this one away now so I'm gonna open up a giveaway thread in the Ravelry group you need to be a member to take part and um, just follow the prompt to answer the question that I'll come up with at the time um, in there to sign up for the giveaway and I'll announce the winner probably on the next episode I always put it at the top um, when I'm gonna uh, announce like which episode so and inside there's some of the pumpkin soaps as well as I'm gonna include this thing of goodies I think it might have been in there the tea the thing of goodies that I showed you it's a candy and whatnot 
So yeah, but here are the little soaps you can see, heart shaped. So yeah, and it's so cute. See the lining? Little bicycle, little summery. So cute. So yeah, so thank you so much, Molly. I can't wait for you to get your package and to hear all about it. She just restarted her podcast um, and she just came out with an episode, I think last week, so not too long ago. So totally check it out. Oh yeah, and here's the zipper pull for... I received a pattern the last couple of weeks from lovely Kay, uh, who is known as Crazy Sock Lady of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. And she has come out with a beautiful pattern called uh, Rhinebeck Socks. I'll put it down here. <laughs> and um, so she gifted me a pattern and she has provided a copy for one of you. Yay! So I will again put up a giveaway thread in the Ravelry group for this with all of the rules and the prompt. So be sure to take part in that. Thank you so much, Kay. I can't wait to catch those on. I think I'm going to knit them out of some green yarn that I have and then wear them at Rhinebeck, of course, which I got my hotel and I just have to get my, um, I just have to get my plane ticket and it's happening. I don't know why I have to creepily whisper about it, but it's very exciting. <laughs> I received a note from lovely Mary Jo of the Crafting Treehouse on Etsy. She started a new shop where she is making um, stitch markers made out of wood. She's like etching the wood. And she offered to send me uh, some stitch markers and uh, some stitch markers for one of you. I told you it was a lot of giveaways, yay. So these are, Outlander themed. Oh my goodness. Can you see them? They're really well made. They're really gorgeous. So it says Sassanach and has a Celtic something, not a knot. I think it's a knot, but it, and dragonfly. Oh my gosh. So this will be for one of you. I'll open up a giveaway thread. You know the drill. And then these ones, oh my gosh, I'm gonna take them out of the wrapper, hold on. Oh my god, oh my gosh, her packaging is so cute. Mary Jo, well done. So these are themed, you'll see why, here in a second. They're music themed, yay! I love them. So you can see her, Lovely card. And then this is what made me think of packaging because of the cute washi tape on the back. Isn't that cute? Oh, I love it. So thank you so much, Mary Jo. Y'all should check out her shop for sure. I mentioned a couple of episodes ago that I really want to make, once the pattern was released, the color blender wrap by Mina, the knitting expat, and she released it. So I purchased that pattern in the last couple weeks, and my hope is to cast on in the next couple of weeks, probably, um, the longer scarf version of that using four skeins of Legacy Fiber Arts in their Hocus Pocus colorways. <laughs> because Halloween cannot get here soon enough. Quicker enough, quick enough. Can't use grammar, too excited. Another wonderful pattern that I received this past week is Nala's Big Sister Shawl. It's absolutely gorgeous. All of the details are down here and the wonderful designer has offered up a pattern for one of you. It's a gorgeous crescent shaped shawl. So do check it out and the giveaway thread will be in the Ravelry group. I received an heirloom kind of passed down from the generations. So my aunt was in town a couple of weeks ago. Hi Aunt Shirley if you're watching. And she brought to me one thing that she picked up on her trip recently. She One of the places she went to was Sweden. Stockholm. And she went to this amazing shop. Makare? Makare? Oh, so lovely. Here's the address if you're local. And she picked up three skeins of 
some Stockholm Woolery yarn. Yay! Oh my gosh, it is so gorgeous. Look at the shine on that. So I think I'm gonna make some fingerless mitts and color work with these guys. They're fingering weight sock yarn, handfect, handfect, handfergat sock yarn. 75% merino, 25% nylon, superwash. Uh, they are 50 grams each ball. Yeah. So thank you so much, Aunt Charlie. I can't wait. It's really soft too. And then she gave me this heirloom kind of thing that's been passed down through the generations, if you will. Um, I think it was my a friend of my Grammy's. I can hear my mom yelling it out right now, but my Grammy received these and then has used them over the years. And now I have received them. And they are in this old school amazing case very very sturdy very 60s slash 50s get ready y'all oh. all of the needles all of the needles oh my gosh so they are obviously straight needles metal for the most part there's just this one wooden guy in here some of them are kind of hollow aluminum i think all of them are actually and they run the gamut between size 15 i think are the largest yeah and then the tiniest ones look to be like a one i think maybe a zero Oh my gosh. My mom said that many an Afghan was made on these needles. So super excited to have these. Kind of want to test them out. They're just about long enough that you could do the style of knitting. <laughs> the style of knitting where you're kind of putting it under your armpit and you knit like that way. So I might try that out, but Thank you so much, Grammy, and thank you, Aunt Shirley, for sending these my way. There are a couple here that are arrow. They're like in their original packaging, which is kind of cool. So I will treasure them and keep them for safekeeping. The last thing I received in the from the postie this week was my sock yarn swap or swap that was hosted in our Ravelry group, the Stitching the High Notes Ravelry group. And this is organized and hosted by Lisa. And it's so exciting. So this is Yarn Enabler Yarn. 10 unnamed variegated colorways. Isn't it gorgeous? So I'll show you some of them. They're obviously unnamed, so I don't know what the colorways are, but do that. Oh, amazing. That screams Easter to me. Ooh, this purple. Weird. Ooh, I like this one with the pop of orange. And I like this one. Oh my gosh. Let me show you all of them, but look at that. Look at this. I love this. Oh my gosh. Look how electric that is. Crazy. So yeah, so that came with it. I can't wait to add these to the blanket that I always talk about but have not cast on. <laughs> so that's something to look forward to. So thank you again, Lisa, for hosting this. And um, I think most of you have probably received it who took part in it. There are so many other sockless so yard sock yarn swaps happening in other groups so be sure to check those out and yeah awesome from the postie that was a good couple of weeks y'all it was a good couple of weeks so delicious i sewed a thing yay oh my gosh so this just happened a couple hours ago <laughs> I took a quilting class to learn how to do flying geese at Hello Stitch, which is a shop here in Berkeley, California. Um, it was wonderful. So this is paper piecing, but using your machine. So you can kind of see there's a template on the back there. 
and I don't want to give too much of it away because it I think you know it's basically a paid for pattern but I learned so much I have more to do I want to do another one of these blocks so that I can really solidify the techniques um, I used stash stash fabric just for fun this is Alexander Han Henry fabric and this pink is Alexander Henry fabric as well I didn't realize that we needed a third color um, and so they had some stash yarn and this is just it worked out because it's this really cool green and kind of psychedelic pattern that's just from Joann's like bargain bin but it turned out really good and it's really fun with the moths it kind of adds this really interesting dynamic to it but I don't think I'll be making a whole quilt out of this obviously but it was really fun to create this little guy just so I had some you know to learn all of the all of the techniques I did get to like the one two three four five I think it was the sixth the sixth triangle and oh my gosh I forgot how to line things up the right way for this to account for the seam allowance so it was a learning couple like basically 10 minutes <laughs> I think I I sewed it and then ripped it out and so did it ripped it out but yeah I'm really happy about how it turned out it was really um I have like I think a lot of people do a little bit of anxiety about doing like sleeves or sewing curves just because it's like how is this gonna happen but it worked out somehow and I'm really thankful for the few things garments that I've made and and for my mom teaching me tips and tricks and how watching her how she like feels the yarn and gets it to ease into um, where it needs to go so so this was a confidence builder for sure it was a little like when I walked in, I think a lot of the folks there have done classes before are members. It's like one of those shops where you can become a member of it. And I think they knew to come a little bit early and like cut their fabric. So I and a couple other people got there and it was like they were already about to start sewing. And I was like, I do you have a rotary cutter, <laughs> which I knew they were going to have one, but so I felt a little like the first half hour or so, I felt so behind and like I had prepared enough and plus added to it is the vulnerability of taking a class like this for the first time. Um, so that was kind of a, like a little bit to get into. But once I got into the swing of things and was like, okay, I can do this at my own pace and, and the teacher really understood like where I was at. I'm not a beginner but I am in terms of this stuff. So, um, yeah, so it was a little bit of a like jolt, jolty beginning, but then I really got into the swing of things and it was a really cool space to be in. So yeah, I love it. It's fun. So what happens is you do four of these guys and they go around in a circle. So that's the pattern. So now I have the pattern and should I want to do like a baby quilt or something you could totally do it community cork board so we had some lovely things that you wonderful makers have highlighted in the community cork board thread in the um, Ravelry group that I want to highlight for you all today and there was also something that a wonderful tea maker sent me in the mail who is based out of Portland that I wanted to share with you all I was gonna have some today but I've already broken into one of them but this is Plum Deluxe Tea. It is so good, you guys. So let me tell you a little bit about this tea. Oh my gosh. So this is hand, blend, hand blended in small batches in our studio in Portland, Oregon. Plum Deluxe's line of signature loose leaf teas will help you to slow down for a mindful moment and enjoy the luxurious feeling of a hot cuppa. Perfect for a warm exchange, whether it's quiet, a quiet night or um, a quiet night in or thoughtful conversation with friends. All of our tea blends are organic, non-GMO, and free of chemicals and sulfites, which is amazing. We support local and USA farmers whenever possible. We also have an active philanthropy program. I love this. 
I am the founder of Plum Deluxe. The company is a tribute to my mother who lost a brave six year battle with breast cancer, but never forgot to enjoy the little things in life. Teas are available um, exclusively on their website, plumdeluxe.com slash tea shop. Their most popular offerings are the Tea of the Month Club. So for only $10 a month, slightly more for Canada, um, subscribers receive one ounce of a custom seasonally perfect, I think this is an ounce, so like one of these guys. Um, let's see, I lost my pores. So select uh, teas. Oh yeah, they're just made for the club. Subscribers also enjoy access to discounts on extra teas and supplies and other surprises. Um, they host member meetups throughout the year, which is really cool if you are in Portland. Um, and several of their members host self-organized group events year-round. It's a wonderful way to be supported and to meet others in your local community, especially like-minded groups, book clubs, health and self-improvement circles, and knit nights. <laughs> So they, he sent a couple of samples. One is Mindful Morning Black Tea, which is what I've tapped into already. Um, the other is Gratitude Blend Black Tea, which is strawberry Earl Grey, um, representing gratitude, appreciation, and kindness. I need to brew a giant pot of this in the world right now. Just saying. That's all I'm going <laughs> And then um, Vista Blend Herbal Tea. Um, this tea reminds us to slow down. Sometimes the best view is where we already are. Also oh, good. So yeah. So some of these I'm gonna keep because obviously I already tapped into it. I think this guy will be in a future giveaway package. So awesome. So thank you so much Plum Deluxe for this and I am honored to highlight your wonderful organization on my We podcast and especially if you are local in Portland, you should totally check them out if you haven't already. So yeah, so that is Community Corkboard Post Numero Uno. Some of the new posts that were in the Community Corkboard thread I wanted to highlight for you. All of the links can be found in the show notes as well as in the Community Corkboard thread where they have all of the details and lovely photos and links and all that kind of good stuff. So the first one is from um, the Etsy shop owned by Faith, hi Faith, who's from Oklahoma. And she has an Etsy shop called Four Boys Fiber. And it is offering a free polymer clay progress keeper with each skein of yarn purchased. Now until the end of September. No code is necessarily necessary and it includes newly released Lord of the Rings inspired colorways. She has some pictures in here and they are so cute and so wonderful. Not cute, they're well cute because of the tiny little Frodo, but they're so cute. I love them. I love the green one. It's really pretty. Okay. The next one is from lovely Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Who is um, the owner of the Tacity Charmed Yarns Etsy shop. And she said that she did a scary thing and she opened her Etsy store. Way to be scary. <laughs> Way to be fight through your fear. Congratulations on your new Etsy store. Um, so she has hand dyed yarns. And in celebration of her bravery, um, she has a coupon code for all of you to check out. So the coupon code is ENJOY13, ENJOY13. So congrats again on your wonderful new Etsy shop. And then we have a post from lovely, amazing Lily Wren of Nordic Stitches, who is amazing. And she says that because the knitters community are pure awesome, she has released a free sock pattern. And the sock pattern is called By the Ocean Socks. And it is gorgeous. Um, you can add lace to your preferred vanilla sock. Um, it can fit any gauge, she says. You can make them shorty socks like she has pictured or long socks too. So check those out. They're really pretty. And the last post to share with you all is from beautiful Gilly, or Jilly. Is it Gilly or Jilly? Reach out to me, let me know. So this is, she has a wonderful uh, Etsy shop 
it is one of like the bags are so gorgeous and it's called mrs creations on etsy and she has project bags and needle holders and she's offering you all 10 percent off using the disco discount code i need to eat some lunch it's like three o'clock the discount code opera 10 and she has extended this code until the end of September. Um, there are a few Beatrix Potter themed bags and some funky flower power fabrics. Um, so she hopes that you like them. So go check it out. So thank you all so much for your posts in the community corkboard thread. Um, I love highlighting all you wonderful makers out there. So it's wonderful. If you have something you want to highlight, just post it in there and I'll be sure to mention it in the next episode giveaway winner there's one giveaway to announce and then two more the next time they're just always gonna be rolling and flowing here so the giveaway winner to announce the giveaway rather to announce the winner for <laughs> um is for this lovely skein of witch of Game, game of thrones legacy knits i'm gonna take it out of the thing oh no i'm not because it's all lovely and packaged let me grab this game I was about to wind up so you can see what you're winning. Hold on. I mean, come on. I can't wait to wind this up. I said ball it up. Do you say ball it up? Anywho. So there were, I think, 110 entries. And I'm going to randomly select one right now. Choose a number between 1 and 110. Amen. All right, the winner is Ava, who is a Freckman, E Freckman, um, and her answer was Jon Snow. the The prompt was, "Who is your favorite character in Game of Thrones?" And she said, "Jon Snow," <laughs> mostly because I have a crush on him. But as a character, because he has a good heart and is also selfless, and is so selfless. Yeah, I totally agree. I think. I think he is kind of the best character. I have others that I love, but I think he's the truly the heart of the show. So congratulations! Reach out to me on Ravelry and um, direct message me and let me know your address and where I should send this wonderful skein of glorious yarn to. That's going to bring it to the end of the podcast. I have a little bit to chat about with you in backstage knitting. I'll keep it brief since I'm just now over an hour. I'll probably be a little bit under because of editing, but um, yeah, I am um, getting used to the new job still, which is great. We're getting ready to start the new season in a few weeks, so things are starting to pick up speed there, um, and I'll be starting to sing again with the symphony uh, next month so I'm gearing up for that as well I think I keep saying I'm getting used to I mean obviously it takes time to get used to a new job but I think I'm kind of holding off on really saying I'm getting into a rhythm until I start rehearsals because that'll add another layer of getting used to like where am I gonna hang out in between work now and and rehearsal or concert you know just those like tiny little things that um you have to get used to but I am loving it I love that I walk out of my office and I hear opera being sung and you know rehearsals and you know I have met some of the folks in the costume shop and it still even though this is a huge organization it still has that feeling of us all working collectively together to put on a show which is what I was hoping for and it really does feel that way and it's wonderful because I have I think I've mentioned this before it it's surreal and wonderful to have so many people and books and all kinds of stuff that were part of my life as Joanna pursuing full-time singing um, and my studies as a singer coming into this career that I've had going for a while as an arts fundraiser. So it's really cool. I'm still kind of getting used to that. I don't know if I'll ever get used to it. It's it's a really interesting, wonderful thing. So so yeah. But we went to a couple weeks ago my friend and I went to West Edge Opera, which is a smaller uh, company mainly located in the East Bay. It's really interesting cuz they do performances in abandoned spaces um in Oakland. 
and this time it was in a pipeline company abandoned warehouse or I think it's still in use maybe but I don't know um, so it was a trip and the night that we went it was for the premiere of Hamlet and unfortunately but kind of fortunately because it made it kind of fun um, the Burning Man like Burning Man Festival, they were having a celebration and event across the street. So while this gorgeous Hamlet French music was happening, there was <laughs> and firework, not fireworks, but like literally fire <laughs> being blown up into the air. So it made for a very interesting operatic performance experience. Um, it was really good and it was good to go see another opera again outside of the San Francisco Opera of the Symphony so that was a lot of fun and I'm looking at my oh oh that I took a quilting class today yeah. so yeah so that was a lot of fun um, yeah I think I think that's it I think we're gonna leave it there I'm gonna have more to share with you in the future um, and I just want to say really briefly that I love you all and I hope that we all can, as part of this community, continue to infect the rest of the world with open heartedness and love and joy and making. So talk to you all later. Mm -hmm.